What up everybody, Mark Fusco here for Behind the Green Screen. This is the channel where I cover every aspect on how I make my Wine World TV show. Now, if you like what I'm doing here, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and tell your friends to do the same, because that's really what's going to really, really, really help the channel grow. This is episode 6, so I need a little help. Alright, so you've got your killer idea, you've done your research, written a script or notes, done whatever testing of a product already, secured a location, basically you've done all the prep work and now it's go time. You're about to hit record, but what do you do to make sure you create a kick-ass show? Especially if you are running solo like I do. Well, here are my top five things to do before you hit record. Number one, mise en place. In the restaurant world, before you get the shift started, you want to make sure you've got your mise en place. This is a fancy fine dining term for everything in place. You'll hear it in the fine dining world all the time. This term has also entered some of the more casual dining places where the staff might be trained in the philosophy of fine dining, but they're not actually doing all of the steps of fine dining, but they, they're, they're the mentality for it. In this world, it's no different. Whatever you need to execute the show you're going to record, you need to make sure that you've collected all that you need. Equipment, talent, products or props, etc. It should all be there before you start. For my wine show, the most critical things are the wine, a wine glass or glasses, a spit bucket, which I'm not using, and my Corvin, which of course I'm not using. Actually, I actually use the Corvin for this. Without those things, I can't review a wine. It goes without saying that I have all the necessary equipment to make the show ready to go, but even then, sometimes something small is missed. I've done it numerous times. So how do you make sure this doesn't happen? Well, that brings us to number two. Lights, camera, action. You should have some kind of checklist, whether it's in your head or on a piece of paper. When it comes to the equipment, it should be pretty automatic. On the set, I don't have much to do since it's a semi-permanent setup. All I need to do is bring the actual iPhone 11 Pro as my camera, my iPad as my teleprompter, my MacBook Pro, uh, the source of my script, my Zoom H1 with my lav mic, and everything else is really always here. Add in whatever I need for a review and we're good. And as far as those things, they're all, lo all located kind of in the same place, behind the screen in the, in the kitchen. So it's not like I have to go to different rooms, get a spit bucket, a wine glass, the Corbin, and the wine. Again, in a restaurant, you have to have all of your tools in place, either on the floor or in the back of the house. Preferably labeled so that the supplies are always in the same spot. It's critical on a busy night to know what that whatever it is you need is always in the same spot, not just some random place because someone thought it fit there. Everything's organized. But this checklist also extends to the actual recording of your content. Have you turned on all the lights? I have. Uh, are they the proper brightness? Yeah. Is the camera in the right spot and your image properly framed? Yes. Have you verified focus? Yes, more than once. White balance? Yes. Exposure? Yes. I've forgotten to light my green screen quite a few times and I've shown, I've had a show not in focus. Double checking again, I am in focus. And I've also skipped over simple things like white balance. Now for this, I'll look at just kind of my regular white balance and everything looks good. It's on automatic and in, on the set, it's pretty easy just to let it sit on automatic. But if you're in the field or you're in a different thing, in different environments and you're using different colored lights, your white balance is really important. Have you checked your audio levels? Yes. Yeah, you should use headphones or earbuds to monitor, but in reality, all you need to do is make sure the levels are good. Uh, make sure they're where they need to be for your normal speaking voice. I speak kind of loud when I do this stuff and I'm not clipping and I'm definitely well within the range where I need to be. If you're using a script, is it all set in the software? Is your scroll speed good? If you're using notes, are they readily available? If you're going to ad lib, have you at least collected all your thoughts? And finally, before you start talking, did you actually hit record for the camera, which I have, there were dots there, and this little red light is on and the numbers are moving, all right? And so for the camera and any external audio device, 
It's super easy to forget either one of these when you wear all the hats. And I'll tell you this much, last episode, I did that. I stopped in the middle to do a recording of me just sitting here to demonstrate 4K and 1080p. And then I restarted everything and I started the audio, which is kind of where I did the audio, but I didn't do the video. So I, I just redid the entire episode from start to finish, which is, which is fine. Anyway, in some ways, it's easier to forget when you have the ability to remotely control your camera, since I didn't start it, instead of hitting record on the camera and then walking away. And if you're interviewing somebody, it's possible to get distracted. This has happened before. Usually I notice it early on. Now, I'll admit, I don't use a physical checklist. Early on, it was something I should have done, but I've developed a routine over the years. Though, as I just said, I kind of got out of, since I was out of my routine, this is how I forgot stuff, right? But even then, even with the routine, I've forgotten to hit record on the audio device or you know, and that really sucks because then you got to use your on-camera mic, which the iPhone 11 Pro is better than the older iPhones. It's way better than the camcorder that I used to use. But, you know, what I do is when I'm about to start my intro, I pause for a second. I look down at this screen here. Make sure it's recording. Or if I'm using the iPad in interview, I'll look to the iPad. From that red, big red dots there on Phil wrote, the clock is running. And they do the same thing with, with this audio device or my Zoom H6, which is what I use when I'm out in the field doing interviews. Then it brings me to number three, or three, however you want to do it. And really, all these really should be in your checklist, but I've picked a few things that really stand out. And this is quiet on the set. See where I'm going here? Lights, camera, action, quiet on the set. Actually, it's quiet on the set first, then lights, camera, action in the real world, right? So this all depends on the environment you're in. Now, when you're, when you're at your home or you have an actual studio, it's much easier to control the noise. I control most of this by recording late at night. It is 12, 13 in the morning. No one but me is awake. There are also no phone calls happening at 12, 13 or 1 a.m. No TVs on in the background. The one thing that I have to deal with in post sometimes is the dishwasher being on the background. It's not. It's fairly easy to reduce or eliminate that, but if it got turned on, I either accept it, wait for it to finish, which honestly is not realistic, or shoot the next available night. Now, what if my air conditioner is on or the heater turns on? I just deal with it, honestly, because it's random or I just turn it off so it never comes on. But for the most part, I'll be honest, I'm able to eliminate that AC background and really the dishwasher background noise I can pretty much eliminate and it's, I kind of have it down to a science, not a science, but it's just, I just have a, uh, a set of presets I use for one of the audio things I use, which that will be a future episode. What if I'm recording during the day? Now I make sure anyone in the house is not near where I'm recording or make sure they're just being quiet. I'll unplug, I'll unplug house phones because phone calls happen in the middle of the day. I make sure my devices aren't, do not disturb. I actually do that even now. Matter of fact, before I started the session, a friend of mine texted me right before I was about to start, reminding me to set do not disturb because, you know, this is very important. If you're using a smartphone as your camera and any notifications might cause the camera to stop recording. Or in the case, since I never, since my iPhone 11 Pro is not attached to my iCloud account at all, well, not, not in the sense where I would get notifications. I, I have zero notifications. And it's, it's always on Do Not Serve anyway. But like this phone, which is my re remote, and it's my actual phone, it might have messed up something with Filmic Pro. So yeah, my, my iPad, my MacBook Pro, all on Do Not Disturb when I start recording because you never know. I worked in the restaurant industry and I have a lot of friends that are still in that industry or just are up late at night. And they'll just randomly, I mean, besides just now, I had a friend of mine randomly text me at 4 a.m. and I'm sleeping because I had to be the, in my day job, I was the opening manager, not manager, the opening person. So I was asleep at four in the morning. If I wasn't opening the next day, I might've been, op I might've been up at four in the morning. Anyway, um, 
So like I said, since my iPhone 11 is my dedicated camera, dedicated camera, it's always on Do Not Disturb. And of course, no notifications on that one. Now in the field, be aware of your environment. Try to decide ahead of time on an area that is quiet, or if it's not quiet, any background noise is minimal or will just add to the video or not distract. Large echoey rooms are to be avoided as much as possible. You can deal with this in post, but the general rule in all things audio and video is to do everything you can to have as good of a recording at the time of recording rather than trying to fix it in the mix. When I do visit wineries, I try to make sure in, in my communication with them, when I say, when we sit down for the, for the interview, please find a place that isn't really echoey or there'll be nobody behind us because I'm trying to avoid people in the background so I don't have to worry about release statements and all that other crap. That kind of stuff. I try to like say, you know, large echoey rooms are not really good, but the reality is sometimes this is what I have to deal with and I just, I use different plugins to help with the echo. Again, that's another video for another time. On to number four, jewelry. This applies mostly to necklaces. If you or your talent is wearing a lavalier, I take off my necklace every time. When I travel now, I leave this at home so I don't have to worry about uh, leaving it you know, at the hotel or leaving it behind on location. If it's just like a necklace and no charms, you're probably fine. It's, it'll be fine even with one charm. The, the problem with this necklace is that I have about, what, three, four charms on there? And as it moves, well, I'm hitting the, I'm hitting the, the lavalier, but if it, if it, if I move side to side, you hear stuff as now it's all jacked up. I have probably, there we go. I probably totally silenced all that, but it does make noise and it's a, it's a pain in the ass. Anyway, so yeah, as I move around, the lavalier will pick all that stuff. Bracelets, I don't wear them, but bracelets aren't as bad since they are not next to the lavalier normally. Um, it's a small thing, but it's very annoying when you're editing and it comes through. So I really try to make sure I take my necklace off. And sometimes what happens is since, I, since I'm at home and I usually put it up, it's usually up in my room, on my desk, the next morning, I, when if I go somewhere, I may forget to put it on. Yet another reason why I don't take it with me when I travel, because God forbid, on my way home from traveling, <clears throat> yeah, I forget it at the hotel, and I get on the plane, and it's never, I'm never gonna get it back. Or if I'm at the winery, and I'm not gonna be back at that winery anytime soon, or I'm not gonna be near that area, and I notice it the next day, yeah, it, it, it throws everything off. So. I actually don't travel with any jewelry. Like I, I, I take off my ring sometimes when I get home. I don't travel with my ring most of the time, but I definitely don't travel with my necklace anymore. And number five, your mindset. Your attitude determines your altitude. I got a shirt that says that available in my Zazzle link below. Anyway, if you're not feeling it that day, then wait till another day to record your video. Make sure you are ready and fresh to give your viewers 100%. Make sure you're not getting stressed out on having to record a video today. It's great to have a set schedule of when you release shows, however. For WWTV, my goal is to release every Monday and Friday. My goal with this channel is to put out a video every Tuesday. But life gets in the way sometimes. Even for me when I record six to eight episodes of WWTV in one session, I have several weeks to prep another set and record them. For this episode and Last week's episode, I wasn't able to collect my thoughts for scripts to write and also have a good enough time to record the shows. So I missed two or three weeks, actually probably a little bit more, a little bit more. This also happened with WWTV, especially since my shows are on Mondays and Fridays and are recorded in different sessions. The Monday shows are reviews while the Fridays are more open-ended. I didn't have any new Friday content ready, so that delayed both my Monday and Friday content. So the thing is, you have to find a, the right balance for you between coming up with content, prepping it, recording it, editing it, and then have a life. It's going to be different for everyone. 
All right. Now, question of the day. What are your top five things you do before you hit record? Let me know in the comments. With that, I'll end today's show. If you're getting value from what I'm doing here, be sure to like and subscribe to the show and let your friends know about it. And I will see you next time.